My second guest, my spotlight guest today is an amazing individual. Zara Tustra is an internationally known spiritual teacher and a fifth dimension quantum healer who lives his life in the truth of now. As a clear conduit, he is a very powerful vessel of transmission of the truth. After years of seeking and visiting many spiritual masters and healers, Zaratustra came to the realization of that which he seek resides in our own hearts. And I totally believe that and I'm on board with that thought and idea. He has created a unique blend of teachings from East, West, and is able to transmit his understanding of the absolute to his audience. Welcome Zaratustra to Life Mastery Radio. How are you today, my friend? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. I'm very grateful. And I would also like to thank the, your listeners for taking their time, taking some time out of their busy days and uh, listening to our show. Nice. So we, during the break, we were chatting a little bit and you had kind of a connection to my first guest on today's show because you had just recently or within the last year, I think, visited his artist. Rat, how did you pronounce Ratatouille? Uh, uh, uh. Rasuli, Mr. Rasuli, or um, yes, I uh, I was honored to be taken to his house by uh, mutual friends, and I uh, and we met. We were supposed to get back to get get together again, but then I left uh, a couple months after, and I went to Norway to do some workshops. So we never got back to each other. But maybe wow. hopefully in Sedona, I'll have a chance to stop by and say hello to them. Yeah, that'd be awesome because, you know, here's another great connection. You sometimes, you have a residence in Sedona. What a wonderful, magical place. Yeah, I've, I've been, I'm very lucky to be able to live here part-time. <laughs> yeah, I could just imagine. I could live there part-time. Well, one day I will live there. It's just, uh, you know, there's such spiritual beings and it's just, a, um, well, there's actually vortexes there, but it is a vortex of the now thinking and, and up and coming thinking. And, and it's just, that's where the transformation thoughts and ideas are gurgling and popping. And it's just a very cool place. Well, what, what happens is when you're in a very powerful uh, place in the nature, what the nature does actually is reflecting back to you, your inner stillness and inner beauty. That's what the nature does. And uh, uh, that this beauty or this silence or this stillness that we do experience being in a very beautiful place in nature, it really comes from inside our own self. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the fifth dimension. Is that where the fifth dimension is? Is it that stillness inside of us, or is it in, is it another place? Well, fifth dimension is an infinite unified field of love without the illusion of duality. Nice. Uh, the fifth dimensional consciousness is one of oneness with your spirit and all things. Uh, we are multidimensional beings. We're infinite. Uh, and we do reside in all dimensions simultaneously. So fifth dimension is not something outside of ourselves. Our higher self, uh, um, guides, angels, our higher knowing, all of that is coming from our fifth dimensional self. Wow. And and so being conscious of that is an understanding and a practice, I would imagine. Um, I do imagine. Uh, yes, you know, uh, yes. Uh, once you become aware of it, uh, because it's always there, it's something that you were born with. So it's not something that we're going to gain, therefore we cannot lose. It's something that we become aware of. But it's always present and it's always here. Mm. Yeah, nice. I think Debbie has a question for you, Deb. Well, I'm, hi, Debbie. I'm, hi there, hi there. I'm a little bit curious about the services that you provide, and I'm wondering... What is it that you bring to these events and in your one-on-one -on -one services in regards to the, the fifth dimension? Um, well, when I do workshops, uh, 
depending on what the theme of the workshop is, whether it's a third eye activation or heart chakra opening, or if the workshop is, the theme is about who am I, is my life story real or not. Uh, all of my workshops, whether it's, um, um, they're, they're pointing at uh, the audience, helping the audience, finding this place within themselves, which is absolutely still and silent. And nothing is moving there. Uh, so would you so, say this stillness is a practice? Um, maybe in the beginning it would be a practice as far as recognizing this place. But it is the very background, uh, the very fabric of every human being. It's always there. Mm. I can give you an example. For instance, I'd love it. If you, you, we all go to uh, movie theaters, and uh, the movie begins, and the projector is projecting a movie on a white screen, uh, and uh, there is sometimes uh, cars are being blown up, blood is shedding hearts are broken, uh, people fall in love, fall out of love, things happen, a lot of dramatic events take place. Uh, and then at the end of the night, after a couple of hours, the movie ends, and uh, the lights go on in the theater. And if you go and examine the screen, the movie theater screen, the screen is white, and there's not a drop of blood on it. And... Uh, and then the next night, there's another movie is being played on the same screen. So what I'm referring to is our very fabric of being is absolute stillness. It's like this uh, movie screen is never affected by anything. And it's from that, that place that we're able to see our emotional ups and downs, uh, our thoughts, as well as our body. Uh, I can go a bit further if you wish me to. Uh, please do. Yeah, this is very intriguing. Uh, for example, uh, we, we can observe things. And the first thing we learn to observe is observing, let's say, if you're, you're watching the seasons come and go. So you're able to say, oh, yeah, it was summer and now fall is coming and it's getting a bit chilly. Or you're sitting at a coffee shop uh, uh, and watching people come and go. So we can, we're can we able to observe change. Things are changing. Uh, we're, we're getting older. We can see our age is, is changing. Well, we, we watch our parents getting older. Uh, then we're watching our body, and we're able to say, oh, Todd, uh, I, I used to be much, much healthier when I was younger, but now I have knee, my knee hurts. My head hurts. I have a stomach ache. I never say I'm aching. I say I, my head is aching. My stomach is aching. So <clears throat> as I, as I uh, investigated further, and also through the grace of some of my teachers, I began to realize that I'm really not this body that I appear to be uh, because there's a separation between who I really am and the body. Uh, as far as uh, I'm, I'm able to observe it, I can see it aging, and I can report it. Um, then I started to realize that I'm not really my thoughts either. My thoughts come and go, and sometimes they're really wicked thoughts that I have no control about, or unholy thoughts, or holy thoughts. And how come I'm able to watch these thoughts? Uh, similarly to if you're lying down on a uh, uh, field of grass and you're looking up the sky and you're seeing clouds, clouds passing and uh, they keep passing through and sometimes then they stop and then the sky is blue. Um, and it's the same thing with, with our thoughts. We can watch our thoughts passing. And sometimes people report to me that Zarathustra oh, I woke up this morning or past few weeks, I've been having all these mind bombardments, all these thoughts are passing through and dri driving me crazy. <laughs> and 
So, but we're able to watch our thoughts and report it. Yeah. Uh, same thing with our emotions. I have a lot of people, especially after workshops, uh, they come and tell me, uh, oh, by the way, thank you very much. The workshop helped me out because in the past, uh, past few months, I've been very depressed. I've been very down. Uh, and then sometimes people come and tell me, well, I've been really uh, blissed out recently. I've been feeling really good. Everything's going wonderful. Um, and my question is always is like, how can you see that you're feeling good and how can you know that you're feeling bad? There must be a part of you that is always in stillness. A part of you is like a column, like a mountain, which is never affected by anything. That right. can change, which is changeless, which is able to see change. Can see you feeling down and feeling up. Can see your thoughts come and go. Uh, same as you're able to watch seasons pass by and you're able to watch the clouds passing by. So how can we observe that and report it unless a part of us is continuously in stillness and non-affected? Right. One of my great teachers always, well, she taught me, and it was, it was kind of a strange thought at first, but after a while I got used to the idea, and that is to pay attention to what it is that you're paying attention to. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, when I, I do share this uh, teaching with my friends or audience, uh, I encourage them to, to bring their attention on this part of themselves that is changeless and take their attention away from uh identifying so much with their emotional ups and downs or their thinking mind. And that's where the freedom is. When yeah. you do find this place within yourself, then you realize that all the rest, including your body, your thoughts, and your emotions, they're all passing. And they're all subject to change. Right. I want to, I want to make sure that my listeners know that they can work with you one-on-one -on -one. And if they go to lifemasteryradio.net and click on today's show page, there's a link right to your website. It's an incredible website. And, you know, I was surfing around there and I found this testimonial and I just want to, this is just awesome. Zara Tustra's unique intuitive touch made a profound impact in my emotional and physical body. I found his work to be genuine, sincere, and the environment to be safe and nurturing. I'm looking forward to attending his ceremonies again in the future. Um, I read that and it just moved me. And that's just, I think that's in a nutshell what it is you bring to the world. Um, I've been uh, blessed to, uh, I was a healer from childhood, even though I wasn't aware of it. And, and as I uh, got older, things began to reveal themselves. Um, but around 2009, I started to hear these voices, and uh, they identified themselves as my fifth dimensional guide, which was kind of strange to me hearing I this bet. Yeah. after all these years. And, uh, and then I uh, had a two series of downloads of uh, uh, different types of information that started to download into me. And, uh, and after that was the birth of the fifth dimensional quantum healing that I was instructed that this is the modality of healing you used to be practicing, uh, which is a combination of energy healing, sound vibration, wind vibration, and uh, psychic surgery. So uh, this is... And then later on, I learned to combine this with uh, the teaching that I have learned from my, my uh, gurus and teachers of the self-awareness, that if I do combine the healing work with this teaching, it's a lot more effective, including uh, and adding up sound vibrational therapy to, to the mix. Wow. 
Incredible. I think I stepped on Debbie a little bit. Debbie, did you have a question? Oh, no stepping. Oh. I I did. Um, I had this metaphor kind of come to me when you were saying that we are not our bodies, because I was thinking about how how it is so easy to react if we're not conditioned to understand that who we are is not what we live in. And the metaphor that came to me is, is I, I live in a house right now that has a nice little flower bed with weeds about as high as my knees. And if I really believed those weeds were me, well, I would, I would have a very hard time starting my day. But I know that they are just a part of my chore and, and what I need to tend to. Yeah. Very um, nice. I, I can also put, uh, one time somebody asked me this question that, uh, okay, if I'm not my body or my thinking mind or my emotions, then uh, uh, so what am I? Uh, and my response is that we're pure awareness and we're aware of of everything, anything that is in our field, we become aware of it. As we're talking, if somebody's honking their horn on the street, you may be hearing that as well. Or if your knee is, is itching, you will notice that as well. Wow. Uh, if we I'm... change our point of view from, from this, that I'm only limited to this, this body, this guy, uh, then this is all I am. But if I change my point of view to the fact that I am an aware, I am awareness, and at this point, this body and this mind is passing through my field, and then this one will go and die, and whatever happens to it, and maybe another one shows up. No, so, we're, uh, sorry, Tustra, I, I'm going to have to have you back on the show. I'm out of time. But it was just so great. You have such a great message. I really want to encourage listeners to go to LifeMasteryRadio.net, follow your link, and explore you some more. Um, you. It was such a wonderful, wonderful interview on t- today on Life Mastery Radio. And I want to thank you for showing up the way you are and who you are. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate this opportunity. It's very nice meeting you. I also like to thank uh, Nila for introducing me to you. Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll talk again, I'm sure. Do you have an event coming up real quick? Is there any, where, uh, where would you be next? Yes, I'll be in Los Angeles on the weekend of April 28th and 29th. I do have an event uh, on Sunday uh, at 4.15 at the Olympic Collection at the Alchemy uh, Conference. And I'm also a guest speaker uh, on their open panel talking about the future of humanity this coming Sunday. Thank you so much. Great show today on Life Mastery Radio, and you heard it here. Make it a great day. Thank you for tuning in to Life Mastery with Todd Allen, the talk radio show that dives into the science of higher consciousness.